Hello and welcome to the world of Zwift. I feel you can see me as your domestique as we make our way around the winding roads of the Zwift universe. And with that in mind, let's see what today's parkour has in store. Join me and some of my bestest friends as we go off the map. Nathan Guerra gives us the inside track on the next Zwift Classic route. Lead game designer Wes Salmon tells us all about the latest in-game updates. Shane Gaffney brings us the next thrilling instalment in his Workout of the Week series. And learn all about the tasty, tasty burrito in Ata Zwift. But before we start, if you fancy liking this video and maybe subscribing to the channel, that would be aces. And do you know what? I'll give you a moment to do that. And while you do, I'll be working out if my mind reading lessons have been paying off. Nope, no, not working at all. Anyway, on with the show. As ever, there's a whole host of activities going on this week in the world of Zwift. So where better to tell you than in a segment we like to call, and we worked hard on this, this week in the world of Zwift. On August 6th, it was announced that Jay Vine would make his first Grand Tour appearance with Alpecin Fenix as he takes on the 2021 Volta Espana. After winning the 2020 Zwift Academy, Jay impressed by finishing second, amazing, overall in this year's Tour of Turkey. Ride on Jay, ride on. And more good news. Zwift has partnered with Vitality for a ride series kicking off on the 23rd of August. Every ride completed on the Vitality for UNICEF ride series will unlock a life-saving polio vaccine for a child. Plus, you'll be entered into a prize draw to win a brand new Canyon bike. The more rides you complete, the more vaccines will be donated and the more chances you have to win. Now, we all have our favourite routes, but what about those routes less travelled? Well, this year's Off The Map Tour is back to explore the back roads of Swift that are far too often overlooked. The four-stage tour taking place throughout August consists of routes through the Watopian Wildlands, London Outskirts, New York Sky Roads, and the Umezi Backcountry. For each stage completed, you'll unlock in-game kit, including jersey socks, and most importantly, an in-game first, the Backward Map Cap. And I took the opportunity to kit up and meet up with a few familiar faces earlier this week as we explored the outskirts of London. You know what? I love a challenge and I love Off The Map 2021. Four stages is all about riding with your friends, doing different routes around the Zwifty verse. And here are my friends. I love the fact we've all got together for this ride. Is everyone nice and warm? I've been in the pen for the last 30 minutes, so I'm actually very warm. Yes, thank you. Three, two, one, we're off. Stage two. Matt, you're the man who tends to know about this sort of stuff. How far are we going? How much elevation? What should we expect? The pretzel, it's, this is one of the longer rides, actually. And obviously, depending on the pace you ride, will depend on how long it takes you. But this one's just over 50 k's. There's a little run out first, and it's quite undulating, obviously flat through London. But once you get into the Surrey Hills, it's pretty hilly. I can't remember exactly the elevation. It's pretty hilly, but not ridiculous. Box Hill comes right near the end. So if anybody wants to save a little bit of energy, go for it. Make sure you've got something in the tank for the final climb of Box Hill. From the top of there, it's only a couple of miles back into the finish. Box and then box. The thing is though, I, for the first time ever, which is what the joy of off the map is like, I'm riding hoodless. I do not know how many watts I'm pushing out. I don't know what my heart rate is. Hannah, I don't know if I can feel this lack of data. You can, you can. You just follow us. But Matt's a good wheel to follow. Like he paces it really well. Matt, I think I've become the opposite version of you. You spent your formative years as a pro, working on that, looking at data and all that sort of stuff. You don't ride with anything now, do you? I'm on Swift four or five days a week with all this information, which I really like. But when I go out onto the road, which I do a couple of times a week, I want to leave all that behind and just do what we're going to do now and again on this ride. It's just ride for the sheer joy of it. There's a real purity to cycling. And that purity is fundamentally exploring and feeling free. Becca, what's, what's your favorite point of the Zwifty birth? Where do you like the most? Where's your, I'm not going to say happy place, because sometimes it's going over the top of a climb, and that's definitely not happy. If I had to pick one, it would be London. I love going through the tube station. It still feels like a massive novelty. And I also love sprinting my mum, in particular, out of the tube station. <laughs> she's always on Discord, and she's hilarious. Every time, she's like, oh, it's so steep. But we do it every time, but I love London. Hannah, where's your favourite world? The Yorkshire world just brings back great memories from the, the World Champs in 2019, being at the Draft House, watching the races go on. 
And so when I'm on the roads, because it's real and we've been there and it's you know, been on that course and ridden on it in real life, then when you do it in game, you're like, oh look, there's that place or there's that, there's that. Earlier on, we went past one of these pubs in London and I only just started looking at the names of these pubs. It was called the Empty Beadon. Oh, I love it. In terms of detail of some of these, here we go, pub coming up, guys. On the right-hand side, that is the, the Empty Beadon. Wow. Yeah. My avatar regularly drinks in that pub. Well, I've actually got an empty bead on right now. OJ, do you know what my dream is to just increasingly look more like my avatar? Because it just looks so damn cool. <laughs> and I'm one step closer with my map jersey. I love the colour of these shorts. Really cool. What do you think of the map kit then? We've all got it on. We're wearing it in game. I love it. The colour palette's great. We look like cherry blossoms riding around, don't we? It's like an olive green or something, isn't it? The shorts and the socks. I think it's stage. The best thing about this kit is the fact that you can unlock it in the game. And if you uh, just do one stage, you get the matte sock and you get the cap. And it's the first cap on Zwift you can wear backwards. And I am a massive fan of a backwards cap. If and where you're going to wear it, I love a backwards cap. Right, come on, guys. I think, I think we've got about 10k left. Now's the point before anyone puts in an attack. I'm watching you, Walker to try and get a photo of us all together. Let's try and form up. Quick, there's the photo there. There's the photo. Arbex, cheeky little ride on, coming your way. Thanks, Stevens. Hannah, a little cheeky ride on is whizzing its way to you right now, straight oh, into your Swift inbox. You. The best thing I just found out, I wasn't actually friends on Swift with Matt. I've just had to friend him before I get my ride on. Only slightly awkward, wasn't it? That was really a little bit awkward. <laughs> <laughs> I know, just found out. How long is this climb? I can't remember. Super long. About four, 4K. Oh, God. I've made a terrible mistake. I don't know. You're looking pretty handy. The whole dynamic of this call has changed, doesn't it? <laughs> Do you know what gets me about this climb, though? Is when you reach the summit, there's another false flat. Oh, super tuck. This is where my 100 kilos comes in handy. <laughs> Here we go. Well, I definitely think we should have another sprint on the line to see if Hannah's got it again. Okay. I'm getting all nervous now. <laughs> uh, me too. I'm like, I'm speechless. I'm a bit like, oh, come on now. I'm coming through. I'm coming through. Oh my God, OJ's gone as well. OJ, Dr. Van. Oh, I'm going to drop my off. Oh. It's too soon, OJ. I dropped a power up. <laughs> Regret this heavily already. Go on, Hannah. We can get back, me and you. I'm going to slingshot you through, Hannah. Oh no, we've got this horrible climb. Too early. Oh, that was awful. It's bloody tube climb. 600 metres to go. Ah, she's gone. That was so stupid. Well, there you go. We've just done stage two of Off The Map. It was absolutely wonderful. We had fun. We had coffee stuff. We had laughs. We had banter. We had a couple of sprints, which Hannah won. So thank you, Matt. Thank you, Hannah. Thank you, Rebecca. Let's do it again soon. Let's not wait so long next time. Let's get it in the diary. Bye, everyone. See you soon. Definitely. I need to lie down. Cheers, guys. As you can see, I've towered off because I was the sweatiest human on earth then. Uh, you two can get your hands on the IRL version of this exclusive map kit by completing all four tour stages. You'll have the opportunity to freshen up your wardrobe and be the envy of your next group ride or stand out at your local coffee shop. And don't worry if you've missed a stage at this point. There is a catch-up week scheduled specifically so you can explore routes that were previously available. Follow the link in the description below to sign up and get exploring. The Zwift Classic Series continues at a pace, and this week sees race six of eight with Rund um Innsbruck. As ever, we have the font of all Zwift racing knowledge, Nathan Greer, to tell us everything you could possibly need to know about the course. Welcome to Zwift Race Knowledge with me, Nathan Guerra. This week we're doing the Zwift Classics race number six, and it is on the Innsbruck Ring, which is located on the 2018 UCI Worlds course that Zwift launched in conjunction with the In Real Life Worlds. Now the Innsbruck Ring is known for having sprint finishes, but 
This is actually my favorite course for really taking it to the competition, but you have to be willing and you need to know the moments and the places out on course to try and make that happen. And the other thing is you have to be relentless. The speeds are gonna be very high from the get-go, so you're just gonna be looking to settle in and looking forward to about that two to 2.5 kilometer mark and where there is a roundabout, you'll be taking a right-hand turn toward the overpass, which is actually a 2% uphill gradient. This section on course for each subsequent lap becomes more and more important. As things get more whittled down and legs get more tired, these sections with high speeds and solid attacks will put a lot of pressure onto the pack. Remember, you have to be fully committed on this course to breaking things apart. Because there are opportunities that consistently come at you, you have to take them every time. Use these little sections to try and get a gap on the field and force them to chase you back. Now, as you head into the cobbled section, one thing to remember about this course is you're not gonna see the fruits of your attacks up front. You are going to see them later on in the race after a few times over the leg snapper, but you're trying to make things very difficult if you are looking to try and whittle things down and get a breakaway happening, except for on this cobbled section. This is one of the one sections out in this course that I say, don't really do a whole lot. Sit in, wait a moment, reserve some energy because your snap over that leg snapper needs to absolutely pop. Now, as you're coming into the leg snapper, make sure not to be on the front. You're not gonna be having any feather power-ups. It's gonna be arrow, burrito, and drafting power-up, but you can reserve an arrow, perhaps, for that last little kick over the top. Another thing about the leg snapper, punch it over the top, because you want to get into the super tuck as quickly as you can. It's not gonna feel easy, but if you can sprint over the top of the leg snapper and get as quickly into that 57 kilometers per hour, you can get right into a super tuck and drop the competition the quicker you are into that high, high speeds. And then one other thing, there is a bump a little ways down the descent on the other side of the leg snapper. Pay attention to that. If you don't start pedaling early enough, you're gonna lose a ton of momentum. So the moment that you're about to lose that super tuck, start pedaling and then downhill into the next sprint section. That leg snapper definitely puts people's hearts into their throats. They're gonna be over threshold at this point, and this is really an opportune time to make something happen. Usually about two to 100 meters away from the downhill gradient off of the leg snapper. From that point, you do get the riders coalescing again, getting into a little bit of a pack and settling down. The moment that happens, Boom, I go again and try and maybe get the first across the line for the sprint. If you're looking through fastest through the segment or really focusing on the sprint points, follow the moves here, wait till that last 200, 300 meters, use an arrow power up and try and get away. If you're doing the breakaway, this is a great burrito section. If you do have a drafting power up, use that and just try and hang on to the wheels. Now, a little bit of a tactic that you can use after the sprint section is there is a right-hand turn into a negative 4% gradient leading into the finishing straight. Now, if everybody sprints for that sprint section, it all comes back together into a peloton, no worries. Use that speed off of that negative 4% gradient, and as it goes into the zero, you're gonna be wanting attacking full on of off the front. You'll get a little bit of a gap at that moment, and as you do, if it's over five meters, you can just continue on at a well over threshold effort. Anybody trying to come back to you is gonna have to sprint. You're gonna have a ton of momentum coming off of that negative gradient, and a lot of riders are gonna be seriously hurting at this point. Make them force a chase, and riders are gonna be burning more matches. You're being relentless, remember. Now, if it does end up being a sprinter's delight out here today, be aware is the tactic of who is around you and what kind of a sprint to employ. If it's super high speed, wait till those last moments kick from 200 to the line. But if it's really whittled down, maybe go from a little ways out and don't risk that dice roll with a lot of bodies around you. Now, if we're talking iconic moments in Zwift racing history on the Innsbruck ring, there's nothing more epic than the last lap flyer of Ed Hopper in the KISS Super League round number two from 2019. He builds a 44 second gap at its highest at one moment, but don't be deceived. A hard charging pack can bring you back so quickly on this course. He puts his head down and gets to the line in first place, but with only a two second gap 
over Stevie Young, the python from back in the day from Canyon ZCC. This field was absolutely stacked with in real life pros alongside of some of the biggest hitters in Zwift racing history. Ed Hopper made it happen, took a risk, and took down the win with that gamble. And that's Zwift race knowledge for race number six in the Zwift classics, the Run to Men's Book. You can check out the live broadcast of these races over on Zwift Community Live's Facebook, YouTube, and Twitch channels. Myself, Dave Toll, Kate Bates, and Anna Russell will be taking through lots of the racing's live action. As always, everybody, good luck and ride on. B is for burrito. Burrito. Short for breakaway burrito, and that name tells you most of what you should know. This power-up was recently updated, so listen up. The burrito disables the draft effect for all riders within 2.5 meters and lasts for 10 seconds. Riders ahead, behind, or beside you will definitely feel the pain. Some may even remove you from their Christmas card list. If you see someone use their burrito, keep a healthy distance for those 10 seconds. And be sure not to waste it by using it when another Zwifter near you is using theirs. It's not just for you though. You can also use a burrito to help teammates break away, stay at the front, let them put the hammer down, and activate the burrito so the chase for everyone behind becomes way more difficult. Well, if Wes Salmon's here, lead game designer at Zwift, it means it's time for the inside line. Wes, how are you? I'm doing great, OJ. How are you doing? I'm doing all right, thank you very much. And may I say thank you so much for the backward cap, which was a Zwift first, I believe, in the Off the Map series. It really is. Uh, and I'm wondering how long it's going to take for you to realize which position the cap brim is for the most aerodynamic uh, experience. Is it up or down? Tell me. I, I really can't tell you. That would be giving away too much. But I think what we should do is get you in the wind tunnel with one of these caps and really settle the score. I'm into it. Just a cap, nothing else. Totally into it. Well, okay, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'll tell you what, let's talk about the inside line because you are really spoiling us. We've got some great stuff coming up, haven't we? We do. We've got a, a number of great features coming out for the next release, and I'm really excited about them. Well, let's talk through them. Uh, two new cool. ones to explore. We have got new routes. We do, we have two new routes in Umezi. Um, one is a climber's delight type of route. It's effectively the sister route of the sea to tree climbing route that starts in the southern paddocks. Um, and this one will go counterclockwise through the temple climb all the way up to the mystic tree KOM uh, marker. It's about five kilometers, but it's 130 meters of climbing on dirt. Uh, so this is one of those kind of routes where I typically would do a bike change. Uh, I'll jump on a mountain bike once I hit the dirt. It just makes so much difference for slow climbers like myself. A gravel bike would do just as well. Um, anything that doesn't have uh, road tires is gonna be preferred on that type of climb. Uh, so yeah, it's one of the really quick punchy climbs you can do repeats on as well. Uh, the second one is the opposite of hill repeats. It's the farmland loop. And this is a uh, under eight kilometer, mostly flat route uh, with a little bit of rollers. Uh, it's about 57 meters of climbing. Uh, and it kicks off at the northern paddocks in Umezi. Uh, and it goes clockwise as well uh, around the farmland. It's very chill. There's no segments to chase. It's very low pressure. So it's one of those routes that you can jump on and just, you know, put in 60 or 90 minutes and just feel good about what's ahead of you as opposed to dreading a big climb. Uh, so it's really great for racking up the miles uh, and most importantly, the experience points. Now, let's talk about the UI because there's been some changes made there. Yeah, so this is a really good one. It's one we've been working on for a while, and it's something that people have seen in events for a long time. Uh, when you're joining an event, it'll tell you uh, with a progress bar at the top of the screen how much further in the event you have to go, which is really helpful because you kind of want to know that stuff if you're deciding whether or not this event's going to fit into your schedule at the current pace. Well, for free riders, they don't have that. Uh, and pairing that with the achievement badge hunting check marks we put in the route list, it's really important that we give information to users about how long something's gonna take and if they've already done it or completed it. So we've added that bar for a route completion for all free rides. So if you select a route and you start on that route, you'll see a bar pop up just below the elapsed time and your mileage, letting you know how far into that route you are and how much of that route is left. 
Uh, so this will hopefully be really great for those, one, that love to complete things, two, that want to chase badges. So that way you know exactly how much further you have to go to officially complete that route. Well, Wes, you have been busy, and I am told as well, it has been whispered to me, there's more changes coming in the future as well. Yeah, there's a really cool change we're working on, um, and you probably saw something about this in the last release, where uh, we had an issue with a lot of riders kind of doing a lot of swerving in and out, specifically in Mercury Islands and in London. Uh, we've been doing, for the last six to eight months, a lot of work around what we call pack dynamics, which is the behavior of large groups of riders uh, when they're moving at speed. And if you've ever watched a live bike race, you'll see that most of the group kind of works like a school of fish. And it's very, you know, mesmerizing to see. And sometimes in Zwift, we don't quite get that. And that's what we're working to improve. We want to create that, that organic flow of a pack. And so one of the changes we've made for this upcoming release is that we've made some tweaks to what we call Pack Dynamics 3.0. And we're going to roll this out in a new way. And this is what I'm really excited about because it allows us to really test in production things that we have no ability to test before we release because of the scale of the events. Uh, and once that is complete, we can roll it out to all the worlds. Uh, and the great thing about this is that if something goes wrong and we find that something is not working the way we want it to work, we can roll it back without having to release a new game client. We can do that on the server. Oh, Wes, I love it. A real taste of the future whenever I chat to you. Thank you so much for your time. Speak to you again soon. <laughs> no problem. Thanks, OJ. Guess who's back? Back again. No, no, not him. It's Shane Gaffney is back, and he's brought another workout of the week with him. Gaffers, hit us with it. This week's workout of the week is at overs. Over-unders is a classic workout in anyone's repertoire, but in this over-under variety, we'll spend time at FTP, then over FTP instead. This is also where this workout gets its name from. These intervals are a perfect way to mimic the demands of a challenging Zwift race, where you need to up the intensity to stay with the pack but never get the chance to fully recover afterward. This is a great way to really up the intensity when you're short on time, but expect these to be quite challenging. Stick a fork in me, because we are done. And that is your lot for this week's World of Zwift. And if that's not inspired you to get on your bike or your treadmill, then I don't know what will. Ha! Anyway, if you have any suggestions, what you'd like to see in the future, then please drop them in the comment section below. And you never know, they may be in a future episode of the World of Zwift. Until then, ride on.